hadn't been able to get anywhere near Stonewood for years. So when you take him down this time, you take him down hard. So Aaron, this is your second film and there's huge actors in it. Do they go through an audition process or do you kind of just go by their past movies that they've done? Yeah, with people like James and Mark, you don't audition them, you just offer them the role straight out. But there was no audition process, it was like knowing that they were a good quality actor and they'd be perfect for that role. You've said before that British crime thrillers can look quite parochial. Yeah, they can be a bit, you know, relying on grimy aesthetic and British British realism, do you know what I mean? Which is brilliant, don't get me wrong, I love all that. Well, how do you feel about this movie? This felt professionally different for British cinema and was much more aspirational in its, in its aesthetic and, and also just the fact that, like, look at the main bad guy, he's not like a gangster geezer. The whole film is much more aspirational than that. So this movie is really action-packed and you do a lot of your own stunts. I mean, have you ever been injured? No, uh, uh, no, touch wood, I've been all right. Every job I've ever done, I've never hurt myself. <laughs> uh, uh, so no, I've been good, so long may that continue. We'll end this tonight. And when it's over, you'll go to prison. So Mark, did you enjoy playing the criminal mastermind that is Jacob Sternwood? Yeah, he's really well written because he isn't just bad. He's come back at the beginning of the movie for the love of his son. Mm. So instantly you've got layers going on within this guy that I found intriguing. Last night a man was picked up suffering from a gunshot wound to the stomach. He's Jacob Sternwood's son. Over the years, you've played loads of bad guys, so what keeps drawing you back to the dark side? To be honest with you, you know, they get the best lions and the best clothes, and they're always memorable. And in movies, which probably has a few memorable moments each movie, the bad guy will always have a memorable moment, so you're in the movie, and I, I just enjoyed playing them. Also, they're quite far removed from me, so there's no danger that I am that. You know, <laughs> it's, it feels like acting. The bad guys are more fun to play. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the good guys just, what do they do? They kiss the girl, throw a punch, crack a smile. But the bad <laughs> guys get all the complicated stuff. It looks really glossy and quite James Bondy, but it does have a hint of that old school Hollywood feel to it. I almost wanted to work within the archetype of those old films that I'd seen, you know, like the archetype of, of, of heat and of infernal affairs, and you've got the kind of fractured, damaged cop who's been after the sort of highly intelligent mastermind criminal. But I think what we wanted to try and do is make them as three dimensional as possible. So I gave them a lot of backstory and there's a lot of history. And, you know, there's points in the film where you see emotions from these two men that you don't necessarily always see in crime movies, you know. There's points where you might see one of those characters cry, but I won't go on about it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't give too much away. Can't give too much away, yeah. And are you happy with the final product? I think so, yeah, I think so. You kind of like, I don't, as a director, you don't ever be too happy with your own material. You kind of like, I think if you sort of sit there and go, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm great at my job, I just like, yeah, I can't watch it again. I probably won't ever watch it, the film ever again. It's the like, same as I've never seen Shifty since I made it, and I can't, I can't see nothing, anything but the mistakes. Well, I certainly didn't see any mistakes, and I highly recommend that you go and see it. Why don't we just let off some fireworks while we're at it? He'd written something on his hand. Punch 119.